Uh, thanks everyone for coming out. Um, you know, let's get things started. Sorry. Um, you know, first things. <laughs> Um, you know, can each of you kind of talk a little bit about, you know, when you get that first call from Dick Wolf about, you know, coming on to these shows? You want me to start? You want me to start? Uh, uh, we need these. Do we need these? Can we? Can you guys get better like this? Or like this? I think they're filming it. So. They're filming it. Okay, we have to. Okay. Oh, great. Good. Oh, they're filming it. <laughs> well, actually. Uh, <laughs> All right. Okay, I'll start. So, so I, um, I had just done a pilot uh, with NBC called Hatfields and McCoys that Patrick Fluger and Sophia Bush were on. We all played family members, um, which is so interesting because now we all work together on this show. And it sadly didn't get picked up. And I got a phone call from one of our executive producers. Her name was uh, Dawn Olmstead, and um, and she said to me that she was devastated, I'm so sorry, you know, you were great, and this sucks so much, and I'm on my way to Napa to, you know, drown my sorrows, and, um, and she said, but, but I think my husband's going to poach you for our show, or for your show, and I said, what? Okay, and like, that was the end of the conversation, and then sure enough, two weeks later, I got a phone call from NBC, and I'm meeting with the producers, and I'm talking to the whole team, and it's like it all just kind of happened in the blink of an eye, and and it was it was great. I was blown away. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I I was at uh, I was I was at Universal. We had we had just gotten picked up, and uh, so I did the upfronts in New York. You hadn't been hired yet, and I went back to Universal to go talk about stories and stuff like that. And they said, "Have you ever heard of this kid?" I said, "No, but I don't know anybody." <laughs> Because I don't watch TV, and uh, uh, and they said NBC loves this guy. Looks like he's gonna be this thing. I said, okay, so you sounds great. So I knew before so you, you. You signed yeah, off on me. All yeah. right. I said, yeah, he's cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Thanks, so, buddy. <laughs> yeah. But I, that was it. Anyway, so I knew about how. He, you want to hear how I got it? Yeah. Uh, well, I had done Chicago Fire. And uh, people liked me on that show. You know, they originally said, will you do three? And I said, okay. And so I did like 15 or something. And uh, I met John Seda, which is a, a treat. He's a true beauty. And uh, so um, my agent kept sending me scripts. He's here now, he'll attest this, for pilots for the next season and I didn't like anything. And finally he said, you got it, you know, and this one is, looks like a great one. And I'm, I, I honestly was like a kind of ho-hum, but I said, okay. So I went on a, a pilot audition for a show called The Blacklist. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so I went in and I did a good job and I'm driving back and my agent said, they want to test you. And I said, okay. And, uh, and I was kind of of two minds. And of course, Dick Wolf, who's actually God, <laughs> heard about this. And within a day, he called me and he said, I want to take you off the market before you make a deal. He says, I want to make Chicago PD. And he said, here's the sweet thing. Even if it doesn't get picked up, I'll make you a regular on Chicago Fire. So it was an offer I couldn't refuse. That's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. Crazy about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jason, you were originally kind of brought on to Chicago Fire as a little bit of an anti antagonistic character for Casey. So, I mean, what was kind of that process of wrapping your head around becoming a leading man of a new show? I mean, how did you kind I, of... Uh, I never... Look, the, the, it was a very significant day for me, the day I started on Chicago Fire. My mother had died in March, and my father died in July, and I buried him in August. So, and the day that I put him in the ground, I got on a plane and started Chicago Fire. And, uh, and my parents had grown up in Chicago. And I have a lot of roots in Chicago, and I might cry. So it was, I knew this was something that I had to do. And so I arrived on the set, obviously nobody knew this. 
I don't even, Jesse didn't even know. I don't really talk about this. But uh, I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, so uh, the producers, Derek and um, Derek Haas and Michael Brandt were there. And they were happy to see me and like, thank you for doing this and all that stuff that producers do to welcome you. And Dick loves you. I'm like, okay, good. And he said, boy, you're playing a bad guy. And the first thing I ever responded to was I said, no, I'm not. And it was written as a bad guy, but that's from Casey's viewpoint. So for act, I never look at, there's no good guys or bad guys. You know, of course, you know, it's all on how you look at it and you can't play it like that. You know, I, I understood it. You know, he was a cop, he's trying to protect his son because of who he was. You know, his son might have done something wrong and he was willing to take responsibility for that, but did he deserve to be raped to death in prison for it? Which is what he would have happened, you know, for being there and my son. And I put most of those guys away there. So, you know, you try to find ways to make sense so you don't, because it's a trap playing a bad guy. So I, I've always been trying to, and I guess one of the things I always try to do, I play, try to play the good guys dark and the, and, and the bad guys light. I think it's a good way. You always try to go the other way, it, it, you know, because people are people, you know, and it's, it's, there's no black or white, it's all gray. And I think that's, you know, what's interesting. So I, you know, and when I came, they said, oh, NBC wants to make it more likable when we got picked up. And I said, that's a mistake. You know, we want to just make him. You know, it's not... I said, how we, do you we feel... We love watching him because he's so twisted. But how do you yeah. feel about being around somebody who wants you to like him? You know, it's a little... You know, I'd rather... He's honest. You find good quality. But they made him like... Then they had me beat the shit out of somebody. And then they I don't started know if you going back and... Right oh, we now. like him. So they made him less likable. So, you know, they made it... They Remember we reshot? Yeah. Like all kinds of Voight beating people up and being angry. Because... <laughs> So they, you know, and uh, whatever. So it, the amount of Voight beating people up in the show that gets edited out that you don't see. Oh my gosh! That's that's just <laughs> between takes. Rooms full of footage. <laughs> and I can't fight, and he can't. I'm like, <laughs> this guy's like Mr. Jujitsu. <laughs> yes, uh, I can't fight for shit. Yeah. Well, so that brings up a good question about the training that you guys have. What kind of training did you have to do kind of going into this show? <laughs> um, <laughs> we did, so when we first got hired, we did like a, a maybe a week-long course with um, Brian Luch, who is our fearless technical advisor out there. And he's been on the force for a few decades. Um, you know, so experienced. And we did defensive driving and we did clearing rooms, uh, moving as a team with firearms and, and stuff like that. And it was, um, it was a great, uh, you know, baptism going into the show to really get ready and get into the mindset of what it's like being on a team and, and doing this day in and day out. Um, and, you know, we, we loved it. And I don't think you were there for much of it, were you? I was, I was there. <laughs> I got bored. <laughs> And I also, I mean, I just, I also kind of felt like I had a big script to prepare. And uh, so I just kind of, I, wa I wanted to concentrate on the words. Your character's doing his own thing most of the time that's anyway. That's why, you notice how everybody knows yeah. what you're doing? <laughs> and I just walk, it's because I don't know how. I missed that class. So, you know, you just kind of adapt. That's the truth. You've never seen me hold one of those big guns. Cause they let you do it once. Yeah, they let you do it once. Oh, uh, yeah. But that's, you know, choices. Yeah, uh, yeah that's it. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. Well, well, Jason, with your character, they brought in uh, Sophia Bush for Chicago PD, and, and your character obviously kind of has a rich history with her. I'm yeah. wondering, you know, what was it like kind of developing that dynamic and kind of diving into that part of Voight after playing him for a whole season, you know, before that, almost, on Chicago yeah, Fire. That stuff is fun. I like that because, you know, everybody tends to look at somebody from what they've seen. And, uh, you know, that's an interesting side of the character, I think, that, you know, he's got a heart and he's got a, you know, he, he cares deeply. Uh, and, he, and he really has a lot of feelings. I, I don't think he can feel them much. And... Uh, 
So, you know, part of the process is him finding that. And I think Lindsay is helping him to experience that a little bit more. He doesn't realize it, but I, I think that that's the case. You know, and they're, uh, they're, whether they like it or not, they're two hearts with one beat, you know, and, 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 uh, and it's just one of those things that is the way it is. You know, they may disagree, they may fight, but it's really a mirror. It's, 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 it's the same person in a way. So I, and I hope that Boyd is, you know, he's, he's a father figure to her and all this kind of stuff and influences her. But I think it, it, just more of a kind of a cellular kind of level, I think that they're... Yeah, she's taking care of him just as much as he's taking care exactly, of her. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's a nice little home. You know, he can, he can, I like to use the metaphor of being naked. You know, he can, he can take his clothes off, even though he'd never realize it. But he, he, he does. And, uh, and I think she too. Because they're kind of like each other. They think they're a lot tougher than they really are. But they're really tough. <laughs> <laughs> right? I think. Something like that. And, and Jesse, I mean, your character has a, a very interesting dyna dynamic with the Aaron Lindsay character. And like you said, you guys were in another pilot together. So how was it kind of establishing that dynamic? I mean, was there always that chemistry on the page? Or, or how was that process? I mean, it was really exciting when we all got cast because you, you, you know, you work with actors and, and maybe a couple times in a career you see someone again in something and there's two of you, but never three people in the same show. It's just crazy. And it was, and it was literally, you know, six months earlier that we were all playing siblings. So it was kind of fantastic to go, oh my gosh, I'm, all these people that I built this great relationship with that now you know, I didn't think I was going to work with anymore. Now we're in Chicago together and we're starting this whole new journey. It's going to be awesome. So starting that way was just a, a blessing. It was awesome. Yeah. But how much of that relationship was, was on the page when you first, you know, kind of came oh, to the role? Oh, I see. Okay. So it was really funny because um, once we got to Chicago, or right before we got to Chicago, um, Patty and, and Soph and I were all talking about like when we were going to get the first script and what's, what's it going to be like. And we were all joking that, you know, we had just played brother and sister. And so it was like, you know, at some point I'm going to date one of you. And, then, and, and, and we all, and we were laughing like, gosh, who's it going to be? Oh my God. That's going to be so weird. You know, cause you, whether or not it, you mean for it to happen, if you're playing family with somebody, you kind of put them in a, in a, in a box, like in a, in a mindset of this is, this is my sister. That's, you know, um, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, now we got to have sexual chemistry. Great. <laughs> like, um, but it, uh, it kind of happened um, organically right away. We just, um, you know, we, we were such good friends um, from doing the pilot. And, and then once the show started, uh, playing the, um, the, the partners that kind of were flirtatious was a, a really easy thing to drop into. Um, and in that, that was nice that, that there wasn't much work that needed to be done there. That was, that was great. Yeah. And, and the two of your characters kind of have, you know, a little bit back and forth. Obviously, you know, your character's from the military and kind of has a certain order of doing things where Void is not by the book very much. So, I mean, how has it been kind of, you know, establishing that relationship while they're also working together as well? Well, you know, what's fun about that is at first, you know, I don't even know if the writers had a clear direction of this is exactly who this character is. This is exactly who this character is. When, when you do... Uh, a first episode of a show and maybe the first four or five episodes, you kind of are all finding your way. Mm -hmm. And and as you start picking up speed and you get going, the writers start writing to your strengths and they start writing to the, the things that they see, the choices that you're making in the character. And so I think as we got going, you know, here's this this cop who's so unruly and and uh, out of control sometimes, de depending on how you look at it. He obviously, like he was saying before, Voight's not a bad guy in his mind. Um, and I thought, well, well, who's, who's Halstead? Who's this guy? And, you know, is he, uh, is he a Boy Scout? He went to fight for his country. He wanted to defend people. Maybe, maybe this is the guy that just disagrees. And this is the guy that, that, that needs to, to toe the line and, and, and say, hold on a second and, um, and be a foil, you know? It, in the way that a lot of us are foils for Voight at, at different times. But that became something that I enjoyed playing, so 
you know, that's, that was, um, I think that's something that they started writing for more and more. You know, one of my favorite scenes I ever did was uh, in that bar with you after I tried to kill Popo. And uh, there was this scene in Halstead, Jesse, stop the, the thing from happening. Like we were gonna, I was about to drown this guy who, you know. Finale of season one, finale of season one. It was no finale. Oh, maybe, was, yeah, you know, just at was, the end of the season, it was, somewhere. Yeah, there was this, it was a very good episode. What, maybe one of our best, but uh, you know, and it made, and I understood something, which I try to do in every episode. I try to learn something about myself and the character and life, you know, which is, uh, I think, keeps you interested and engaged instead of, and take it, don't take it for granted, you know. There's stuff to, there's gold to mine, you know, it's an interesting job, we, and it's not just a job. But, uh, yeah, one big thing I learned about that, I, er, that it's solidified, was that Voight is, uh, He's smart enough to know, even though he's very bullheaded and he does his, his way and he'll make his case about this is the way it's going to be and he's not going to listen, but he knows enough to know that it's very important that, that, that we have a unit made up of not of eight voids. Mm -hmm. and, that, and in that scene, I, I said, listen, I'm glad you're who you are and that's exactly who I want you to be and you should stand up and say what you want. It doesn't mean I'm going to agree. But that's exactly what I want from you, and I respect you for it. As a matter of fact, that's, that's required. So as hard as he is to confront, he demands that you confront him. And I think that that's what's going to be a lot of what's going forward in the next season, is that I'm going to be, my character's going to be kind of on the rampage. And so he's going to, he's going to depend on the other guys. And, and, you know, when somebody's on the rampage, it... It ain't easy to say, you know, back off because you're going to get bit. But that's what a friend does. And, uh, you know, this unit is a family. So, Well, Jason, how do you kind of find that line with the character? I mean, this is someone who really goes to extremes. But as, as you've gone through the seasons, how do you kind of, you know, draw that line in the sand of, of knowing when, when, you know, you're kind of pushing the boundaries, you know, too much, when, when to push more and when to pull back and that sort of thing? I, I think uh, the most important thing, or one of the most important things an actor can learn and remember is trust. You know, you create the character, the character continues to be created, but you have to trust. And one of my favorite quotes is uh, from a very obscure artist, you probably never heard of a guy named Pablo Picasso. You heard of him? Anyway, he did a painting called uh, Guernica. Anybody know this painting? Hey, Guernica is a fantastic, huge canvas. A lot of stuff going on. It's a small city, town really, in, in Spain that was devastated uh, during the revolution in Spain. And there's lots of different things happening in this painting. And Paz Caso did an interview, and this art critic asked him, he says, you know, God, I mean, how do you, how do you plan a painting like this? And Picasso looked at him like, and then, you know, politely, and this is my favorite quote, perhaps, he said, I paint the picture to find out what it looks like. You know, and if you think about it, creating art or living a life, the opposite of painting the picture to find out what is kind of painting by the numbers. It might be nice, it might be beautiful even, but it ain't gonna be a masterpiece. And, you know, but the other side is you paint to find out it might look terrible. So you got, that's where the trust comes in and that's where the excitement, you live your life like that, you don't need to go to Magic Mountain or go skydiving, <laughs> you know. And that's a good thing we can do as actors, you know, is, is you know, swing for the fences. And there's always another at bat, so. Yeah. And in that, in that trust that you're talking about, you know, he, there's directors and there's editors and there's producers, and... And there's Dick. And there's Dick. <laughs> and so you might say, I'm gonna paint it like this, he says, yeah. no. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, we might do a scene, and, and like Jason's saying, you reach, you swing for the fences, or, you know, you have that trust that it's, it's gonna be okay if you fall down, because you got a guy like, you know, Arthur, who's one of our editors, who 
does no wrong and you know he'll make you look magic even if you did mediocre work yeah so you know that that's part of that trust yeah that's that's yeah man there's a lot of people got your back and i'll tell you what else we're lucky to have on this show is you know is sometimes it sucks sometimes it's just not good enough or something whether it's the writing the acting directing whatever it is and if it's not good enough we'll reshoot it and that ain't cheap and that is something that you're going to get from dick wolf and i've done a lot of tv and that's uh that's one great thing about this guy is he puts his name on something that's it's never going to suck sometimes it's fantastic but it, there's a lot of TV that sucks, not dick. Dick stuff does not suck. Dick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is why I always get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> right? Now you see how it happens. Yeah. Uh, this is my life. Before you were talking about getting naked with yeah. Soap's character and, and everybody getting naked together, oh, and I don't even I know what's going it. on. Well, I mean, the two of you obviously have a, a great rapport, and, and I've seen the rest of the cast. You're obviously shooting these crazy hours in Chicago. You get very close. I'm wondering what kind of shorthand you kind of develop with the, with the rest of the cast as it, now you're going into you know season four of the show. Sometimes I have to look at Jesse and say, "Did I go too far?" <laughs> it's just a look. I just. <laughs> or else, it's like this. Uh, that's all. <laughs> but that's all. That's uh, that's one short hand. I depend on my kind of my uh, my rabbi because I I'm just learning to speak millennial. You know, it's not my first language, and, and I'm not uh, PC. But I, no, he's a he's a beautiful beautiful person that I depend on. Um, but, uh, you know, something that I also kind of noticed is, you know, in this scene particular, or in this episode particularly, you know, there were a lot of scenes where, you know, Void is a man of very few words. He said, you know, when Goodwin comes to the office and tells him about his son, he just comes out and gives, um, you know, Aaron's character a look and, and then leaves. And towards the end, when she tries to kind of stop him from, you know, hurting this man, he just gives her a look and, and tells her to leave. I mean, how is how much of that is in the script and how much of that is you deciding, you know, I don't, I don't need dialogue. I think I can express this with a look rather than with words. Uh, I get, you know, as Jesse said, you know, they start writing. I, and I, mean, I guess a lot of actors always want to add stuff. I'm always trying to cut stuff. Uh, but uh, not, I, I, I can learn lines. It's not that. It's just, I, uh, no, I mean, Christ, I learn lines. But uh, no, I, uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, I mean, like, it, there's things you find, like the slap, that says something. That was something that was an improv. And he goes, huh, mm. he makes little grunts, which I didn't even know I did till everybody started imitating me. Well, you know what's, yeah. you, you know what's kind of interesting is uh, it's, I think it's nicer for an audience member to find their way into a specific moment that a character's having than being shown the way. And sometimes with dialogue, it hits you over the head and you kind of lose, you know, that surprise of, oh, I know what he's going through right now, be because there it, there wasn't dialogue needed. The the audience members right there with him. That's right. And and I think that there's something really valuable about that, and you know, it makes for great characters on TV. That's right, because if you're giving them, telling them what to think, they're sitting there going, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But if they have to be involved, they're like watching. What what? You get them more involved that way, right? Which is what it is. It's a it's a that's what you want to get them into it. <laughs> Give them a chance. Yeah. Well, Jesse, with, with uh, your character and then Sophia's character, you're in a relationship on the show, but we kind of only get to see a little bit of their personal life here and there. So I'm wondering kind of, you know, what conversations the two of you have or maybe you have with the executive producers about where they are in their relationship to make sure that everybody is kind of on the same page, even if you're not necessarily showing like all these relationship scenes and things like that. That's actually a really simple answer. You know, we, we pick up the phone. If, if, it's, uh, if there's something going on in a scene and we're not really sure how we'd be reacting, it's like, hey, are we still tracking the fact that like we were gonna move in a few episodes ago? Is that what's going on? So maybe, you know, in this lighter moment here, we can be playing a look, uh, you know, between 
lovers or whatever that that doesn't have to do with the case um and it's just it's the little things like that for us that keep us um interested and intrigued you know to stay creative and and to uh fill in all the white space on the page um you know and, and it's as simple as picking up the phone and calling a producer and going hey are we still doing that thing or you know where's that going um and sometimes it's just between us to say you know i, I got nothing to do in this moment it's all jason talking to elias and i'm in the background um, and it's not too heavy, you know, the, the, the child hasn't been murdered yet or something, so what are we doing? Oh, maybe we're flirting in the background because of this or whatever. And you create the backstory, you create what's going on in the subtext and all that. That's a fun thing. You know, and that reminds me, I had a great conversation with John once about this Seda, and I realized something. You know, we do, what, an episode a week, right? It's about a week or a month later. But you know, the characters have a lot of life other than the 40 minutes, and maybe I'm in 12 of those minutes, you know? So there's all this other stuff. And so you can make choices just because they didn't write it yeah. in season two or in this last episode. Let's, we can decide that we've had this scene, you know, and it affected our relationship. Yeah. And that's fun stuff, which I think is important. You gotta keep it. If you're not creating it and creating it and creating it, it's going to get old and, you know, and it's a lot, you know, and you got to keep creating it. I think is your, that's part of your job. Make it fun for you. It'll be fun for them. You know, challenged. Well, you obviously have a crazy shooting schedule, 22, 23 episodes a season. You're also doing crossovers. Um, you know, I'm wondering how you find the time to like kind of go through the scripts and maybe, you know, have these discussion about scenes or, or like if you find out that you have a very heavy episode for your character, how do you kind of find the extra time to prepare for that? I, I don't have a life. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't. I work all, the weekend is when I, I, I prep and uh, you know, if I have a little time, I'll go home because I live here. But uh, yeah, I, do, I don't I'll have. I'll a tell life. you. I'll tell you how. He'll, he'll be in the trailer. Give me your paper. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be in the. He'll be. He'll be in the makeup trailer in the morning, and I'll come in. Hey, everybody. Good morning. How's it going? And Jason's going. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> 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 and then he goes. And then he goes. Hey. 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 Jess. 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 Give. Come here. Read. Read, read, read that. Read that with me. Tell me. Tell me if I'm right. Tell me. If I'm yeah. Right. And I'm like, all right. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of lines. You know, and I try to learn them yeah. so I don't have to think about them. You know, I don't want, you know, but, uh, and like at the end of the season, you know, I'm, I got nothing left. It's a marathon. It's, you have to try to plan it, you know, and there's little sprints at certain points. And like this last episode, I was, the last two episodes, I, I remember I was there? Yeah. I, f I went into a state of glee, like in, that was episode 23. It was episode 21, I think. I remember we were in the bullpen? Yeah. And I, I never forget my line. I couldn't remember my lines. <laughs> I didn't remember who my character was. I was to, I had no emotion in me at all. <laughs> you actually I said at one point, you were like, I think. I just said, this is funny. You went, and then Let's you, see what happens. Right, it worked. <laughs> right into camera, you went, I think that's all I got. And you left. <laughs> that's, uh, that's it, I'm off. That's, that's it. You're going to have to make do. So it's, it's like, it's a funny gig, you know, it, it, you, you run out. I'd never run out of gas in my life. There's always something. I fell asleep on camera. In one, yeah, I was in an interrogation scene and it was my close up and I fell asleep. Yeah, swear to God. That's, that's the truth. It was only, it wasn't like, it was like falling asleep at the wheel. Oh shit. You know? Yeah, but uh, that's true. It must have been a great scene. <laughs> it was not good. No, it was not. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> Well, you say that, Jason, but I mean, this was an amazing performance in the finale. I mean, I was that was absolutely an empty episode. Thank you. But that's just going. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I mean, talk about when you get that script and you see, I mean, like you said, there have kind of been, you know, these, these softer moments of void, especially like with Sophia's character and that sort of thing. And then this character really kind of brought him back to, to where we first met him in a real point of desperation. You know, talk about kind of tapping into that and going to such a dark place with this character when you're at the end of the season and, and you're kind of, you know, toward, near your limit. I, I, I passed my limit. I actually... Uh... 
I was like, wow, this is a great episode when I read it. And uh, golly, only because you're actors I will be talking like this. But yeah, I was, uh, I was like, damn, I wish this was episode two of season four, you know, because I could use some rest and, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'll do any scene you want right now. I'll do Hamlet, you know. I, I, you know, I've, I've had about six, eight weeks off already. So I'm like, the battery's recharged and uh, I'm ready to go. But you know, that's, uh, that's the job. And so I did have to just kind of trust, you know, and I know I know the character. There were a couple of times I feel like I pushed, which uh, kind of makes me go rats. Uh, but it's, you know, it's hard not to sometimes, uh, and we have our moments of weakness, and we sometimes make stupid mistakes and stuff like that. Uh, but it's it's it was, I'm not I'm not at all I'm I'm proud of the performance, but uh, and I'm not apologizing or anything like that. But it's it's like that's you know. But then you 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 just kind of you have to fold it in, you know. And Voight's at the end of his role. Voight's got nothing left. Voight's tired. So that's part of how you you get behind it. Is you know you have to make you got. You got a bag of tricks, sometimes your tools are broken, sometimes you can't find one, you know, but you gotta go with what you got. And, 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 and I think a thing that's useful is to remember, you know, the thing that screws you up is when you're trying to be good and then you make it about you. And it's not about you, it's about 12 million people watching. It's for them, you know, so you gotta trust in the director and the people at the monitor, you know. Sometimes you do a scene you think, oh, we thought it was great, and they're like, that wasn't that good. Or I thought I sucked, and I was, I was great. You know, so there's, there's, there's a lot of trust involved. And you, you said it before, it's, if, if you're having fun, then the audience will have fun. You know, you can't reach, like you're saying, and that's, that's the goal. Yeah. yeah, and it's not, you know, it's not life or death. Yeah. We're just pretending it is. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So there's always... And the other good thing about a series is you got so many at bats, you know, and you might foul one off, you might strike out, you might even be in a slump. But you know, you, you get a lot of opportunities to get back up there and hit, you know, and 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 it's it's it is a game, you know, so you just play. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, sometimes you're like, damn it, we lost her. But it, you know. There's always tomorrow. Yeah. Or even another in that day, you know, so blah, blah. Well, um, the season opened with a big uh, episode for your character, Jesse. Um, you know, he gets uh, abducted, and there's this whole saga of trying to get him back. I mean, kind of talk about what it was like. That's the first episode back of this season. You know, what was kind of your preparation for that episode and, and showing that kind of side of Halstead that we hadn't really seen before? Uh, which side is that? The side where he's getting tortured? What do you mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's just a vul that was a very vulnerable, you know, episode for him. He's usually kind yeah, of, you know, that, very well, that's, controlled. That's why, that's why it's exciting, you know, when you're doing a series, uh, especially like ours, and like we're talking about, you know, we, we follow these people home only for this much time. We don't see them all the time. And so can Halstead be a vulnerable guy? Can he be terrified? Absolutely. And if there's a chance to do it, let's see what that looks like. Um, and honestly, the preparation for that episode, you know, you, you work um, what, you, what you think it might be, what you, you might want to do with it, but then when you get there, you got to forget all of that and, and, you know, flush that down the toilet because, um, <laughs> you know, it's like the Picasso painting. You, you, you don't know what it's going to be in, until, you don't know what it wants to be in, until you, you're done. Yeah. Um, and you got to see what's going to happen. And that's part of the excitement. That's that's why it's that's why it's fun. Yeah, you kicked the hell out of that one. That Thanks, was, bud. That was a good one. And um, we have uh, some fan questions or some audience questions. Um, you, the first one is from uh, Sabrina. Uh, can you speak about the the preparation or consideration that goes into being part of the Dick Wolf uh, family of shows? So, you know, when you're doing these crossovers with different guest stars, do you prepare differently for for different scene partners you might have? Uh, you asking me? Or, is, I think she's asking both of us. Oh, um, I don't. I, I don't know about. Jason, but I I think that you know. You mean, uh, are you talking about crossing over to the other shows? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's the same character. 
Yeah. You know, it might be different writers and you, you want the writing to line up well and to feel coherent with what you've been doing on your show. Um, but it's the same character. So the preparation is the same. Um, you know, you want it to be consistent. Um, so it's, it's really about defending that. And if it feels off or it feels uh, a little out of whack, you know, compared to what you've been doing on your show, then you got to fight for it. You're, you're the only person who's going to stand up and, and fight for your character. So, you know, that, that's, that's what goes into the preparation. That's true. But also in the, the, you also have to color it that that's their show. Yeah. And you're a guest star. And so you're there to kind of serve their purpose. And so, you, you know, it's a balance. So, you know, sometimes there's a little baby goes out with the bathwater, but you try to hold on to as much as possible. And, uh, you know, I can sometimes stomp my foot too much, right, in New York. But, uh, <laughs> right. You don't, you don't have to cite examples. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I won't be going back there anytime soon. No, no, that's not true. Uh, uh, yeah, but I mean, I fight for our show and our characters, and you know, I, you know, I, I, I care. This is, uh, I care about Halstead. I care about Lindsay. I care about Voight. You know, I really do. It's their relationships. You know, I, I spend more time with Halstead than I do with Jesse. I spend more time with Voight than I do with Jason usually. Jason is just a guy I sleep with. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. For just to keep the fuck, to keep going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I slept with him. That's I'm not ashamed to say. Yeah. That's a great quote. Yeah. That's a great quote. Well, um, you get to, I mean, particularly Jesse, uh, your, your character's brother is on Chicago Med, so you guys have had some nice scenes together, and, and uh, Jason, you've had some great scenes with um, Mariska Hargitay's character, Benson. I mean, do, do having kind of different scene partners, does that kind of allow you to explore different sides of your character? Does that kind of, you know, help change it up in any way? I mean, what are kind of the positives of that? You know, it's you get to bounce off another person, and for me, particularly with Benson, because she's... You know, she's a, she's the kind of a mirror image, and she's a she's a terminal of comparable magnitude. So it's there's a there, you, one would think they would they'd be butting heads, but I think that they both feel like us. Oh, finally, somebody who understands me. You know, and everybody wants uh, romance and stuff like that. I remember I was talking to Matt, who's our main writer, when he was creating it, and they were thinking about romance. I said, just watch. I know what to do, because there's a lot of romance there, but it's not romantic. There's a lot of love and understanding. You know, whether or not it ever turns sexual is so unimportant. You know, there's intimacy there. That's, and so that's what counts. You know, and you know, it, the only thing to be different is we play the scene the same whether it's in a hotel in the morning or having a coffee in a diner. It, it, it's, it's still a love affair. You know, it's just how you express it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah absolutely. You know, it doesn't matter the, you know, the set or the wardrobe, you know, that's for you guys, right? Or the people watching. And um, another question we got from Christopher, and this is uh, for, for both of you, is, is uh, you know, what motivates you to keep acting when you're between gigs? I haven't been between gigs for, I, you know, it's funny. I mean, we, we work a lot. And there's times it's, you know, it's kind of embarrassing. Maybe even merits shame that we, that we go, I need a break. Mm. You know, because it's like, first of all, uh, just a dr drama in a s out of town on a network show is a lot. But now we got four or five. I remember in the first season, Jesse, we did uh, in the first episode back, Jesse, Jesse rap. we rapped, we did this bus thing. And we rapped at dawn. And he went straight from working all night till dawn. He went straight and started shooting Chicago Fire. Okay, and uh, I've had days like that on the sixth day of the week. Mm -hmm. You know, I rapped at four o'clock in the morning in New York had a four o'clock pickup for a six o'clock flight to go back to Chicago on Saturday and shoot a 14 hour day. And uh, uh, that's hard. 
you know, it's hard. But you know what? Uh, we're we're really lucky. But but we're it's, lucky. Yeah. So absolutely, absolutely. We're lucky. I mean, there's nothing. There's no other job in the world that I'd want to work till dawn and then go and work again all day. No other job that I would do that for. You know, it's because we love it. But as far as um, uh, working uh, and doing different gigs in the off season for the show, um, you know one of the things that that happens you, you're playing this character so long like jason said you know he maybe only sleeps with jason now and he <laughs> spends more time with void it's it's the truth you 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 kind of go i need to like you know flex a little i need to spread my wings and i need to play somebody else because i don't know if i know how to play anybody else besides this guy you know um so that's part of what what keeps you hungry and you know it's important to stay hungry and um, we have another question from uh, Eric Klein. Um, what has been the biggest challenge in your career and how did you overcome it? Mine? Biggest challenge in my career. How did I overcome it? Well, you know, I think, uh, I mean, I, I'm sorry, but you know, being myself, is 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 just a uh, you know that's a full time job, you know, and I I've kind of think life, I approach it, and I think I'm still trying to figure out why I'm an actor, you know, what's what am I doing here, you know, but it, it's a way to discover yourself, discover, and then express yourself, so uh, you know part of the job is to is to you know go through the dark rooms. I think that's how I approach it, because I'm interested in finding out who I am, you know, and trying to be me, or just be. And uh, so, you you you're gonna have personal challenges, you know. Some of mine are well documented, but uh, you know, and and that's 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 life, you know. So and and it, and your career is just kind of how you express yourself along the way as you as you become who you are becoming so there's going to be tough moments and uh really challenging and there's times when you don't think you can make it and uh i guess that's the difference between temper temperament and character is kind of you know what you do with it and we're creating a character and hopefully creating character does that make sense um, for, for me, I think, uh, the biggest challenge was getting out of my own way. Um, you know, we, we kind of have an idea of what we want life to look like or what we want our career to look like. And, um, and it's easy to, to be negative or to get kind of bogged down by that. Um, and, uh, and it can be a, it can be a struggle sometimes to really force yourself to look at what you have and to find gratitude. Um, and I, I would say that getting out of my own way and, and kind of like moving crap aside and going, what's really important? What do I really want? All I really want is to be on set with great actors and to work and have the camera rolling. And if I'm doing that, I'm going to be happy. And, and once I figured that out, then, you know, everything's gravy. It is fun to act. You know, I noticed that it's when, 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 you know, things are shitty, which they are in anybody's life, sometimes you get rough moments or even great moments. I mean, it's like so nice to just be able to go in and act mm -hmm. and, and just play a scene, especially if it's well written, you know. And you gotta, you know, it, I mean, it's just, it's, a, it's like a vacation for me. Everybody likes to go out and party on the weekends. I'm like, I'm the notorious stick in the mud. But I feel like, you know, we, we party all week. I need the weekend to recover, you know? That's, that's kind of how I look at it. You know, I don't, God. Plus, I've been with you dudes all day for five days. Now, I just want to go hang out with Jason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyway, blah.
Well, you touched on something interesting earlier about how you're kind of always looking to learn something new about the character. I'm hoping each of you can kind of answer, you know, what is one thing that you really think that you've kind of learned that you didn't know at the beginning about, about Void and, and about Halstead? Huh, a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, you, I mean, you learn new stuff every day. Every episode that comes out, you might, you might have an epiphany. I think that's the goal, really, is to constantly surprise yourself. Yeah. That's that's why we do it. That's why it's exciting to in a scene, in a moment, have be be in that that kind of sweet spot of not knowing what's going to happen next, and and um, a, a character sitting across from you says something, and then you have an impulsive response to it, and you don't know where it came from, and that I mean that's the that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. A big thing that I think one of the major things that that really clicked for me on Void early on was that, because, you know, you want to know where's the love in this guy? Where, you, on every character, you know, you got to get the job, you got to get where his heart is. You know, these are the, the, the bread and butter of any character. And, 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 and he's kind of cold and somewhat psychopathic in some ways, and he's got a lot of interest. And I realized, but he's a good cop, and he really cares. And I was trying to square that where his heart was. And I realized it's hard for him to be intimate with one person. I think he was deeply intimate with his wife. And he's, I mean, he's still in love with her, you know, and he's, that's his loyalty. But he, so what he chooses to do is he cares about everybody in Chicago. So it's, it's easier for him. So if you, that's why he's so hard nosed, because that's my son, that's my daughter, that's wrong, not on my watch. Like, he really is invested. It's personal. Like, these are my people I'm responsible for. Just like, you know, I'm a father. You know, I have a certain, I care about kids, but my kids, you know, there's nothing I won't do. And I, you know, anybody who has a kid understands that feeling. So he's kind of like that, that this is, these are his children in a way. Because, you know, we can't live without love. So that's the, the, that's the way he, he's intimate. And, and you pull the string on that, it tells you a lot about who he is. And that's, that's not good or bad, that's gray. You see what I'm saying? There it is. And I'm wondering when you have these long seasons like this, um, you know, how much do you like to know about what's coming up versus, like you said, kind of being surprised about, you know, do you like kind of knowing the longer arcs of your character and, and where they're gonna go at a certain point in the season or, or how do you kind of manage that? Yeah, I mean, I like to get a general overview. I look at like a, the way I prepare a, a role, or try to, and 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 then there's a, a there's a scene, there's there's a moment, there's a scene, there's an episode, there's a season, and then there's a whole show. And 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 you want to want to do? I try to take the the I think look at it like an orange. You know, there's a peel, there's a lot of that white stuff, there's seeds. <laughs> But there's some meat and some juice, you know? And so I take the whole orange and I go, 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 and I try to get the whole thing, just tr some of it tastes bitter, and you just spit it out, and then you trust the juice is there and kind of paint the picture to find out what it looks like. So in terms of like, I like to get an idea where it is, but there's not, you know, we had an idea where last season was and then political stuff yeah. happened and it changed and it was like, it was a shock. But I think it worked for us. You know, I disagreed with some of how we handled it. But so what? You know? Yeah. That's so true, though. It's so fluid yeah. that you don't, want, you don't want to get married to, like, this is where I'm going. This is where the character's yeah. going. This is how it's going to be. This is what I'm going to do with it. Because it'll change on that day. You'll get new pages, and you're like, this is a completely different scene. The lines are totally changed, you know? And, and so you don't want to marry yourself to anything. Don't plan too much. Yeah, you gotta you gotta be able to you know move with the moment. But it's it's nice just as people to be to get excited about going. Ooh, I, I'm gonna get to do a little bit of that this season. I'm gonna get to do a little bit of that. And if it changes, so what? But you know, it's it's nice having an idea, a little bit of a roadmap. Yeah. And, and Jason, I mean, is that hard when you kind of disagree with something that's in a script? I mean, does that kind of? No, no. I I mean I. I care about the show. I care about my care. I don't, you know, I know some people like to just look for their part. I like to look at the whole episode and I like to, I like, I like all the characters. I'll, and I have a, a 
very open relationship with the writers and the creators. And, uh, and, and so if I feel like, hey, here's a good idea, it, it's for them. If they like it, they'll do it. If they don't, they don't. If I, and the way I approach things, like uh, there might be something in my character and I don't get it or I disagree or I don't, you know, that old, well, Voight wouldn't do this, you know, which is kind of one of those actory things. But, you know, I, I always approach it like I don't understand how to play this. And uh, I thought it should go this way. And they say, oh, yeah, let's do that. Or they go, no, I think it's right. And I go, well, what? And it turned out one of the greatest scenes that I ever did was a thing I just said, we can't do this, it's wrong. And I talked to Matt at length and he explained it and, it, and I got, and I, oh, and I really had to work on it, took a lot of, and it turned out to be this great scene. You know, and it was ex the way with the exact dialogue. So my, my job is if, if I don't know how to play it or I don't understand it, it's gotta get cleared up or changed. I can't, I, I'm not going to pretend to, you know, that, that, that would be irresponsible. So everybody's trying to make a good show. And if I, you know, sometimes you just, you don't get it. You know, like there, there's sometimes there's a line, you don't understand it. And they, you know, oh, okay, now I get it. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, it's just, you know, when you have, what, 25,000 lines in a season or whatever, you know, it's... Uh, you're gonna you're gonna not get a couple of them, and either it's miswritten, or you, you just didn't open your mind up enough to see it. But that's what pot's for. <laughs> and that's a uh, one way to end the panel. Um, <laughs> um, thank you to uh, Jason Begay and Jesse Lee Sofer for coming out today. Thank you so thank much. You.